Hello everyone, we're here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh and this year it's 2019 and we're specific about the date because we've got some news we want to talk about that came out right before this event. So the news that we're talking about is on the subject of the FAA upcoming regulation that affects sport pilots and light sport aircraft. Now. Let's put this in perspective first. The regulation is some years away yet, not months, years away yet, and we don't know exactly when that will come out because the work is not done yet. Uh, but it has to be done before 2023. Now that sounds like a long way in the future. I don't think it'll take that long, but it will definitely take a while. And what we're being told today that I'm going to report briefly will change. We don't know exactly how it will change, uh, but we are encouraged by what we hear that so much of what FAA has been requested by the Light Aircraft Manufacturers Association and others like EAA and AOPA, uh, all of it is on the table. So here's some good news. First of all, FAA thinks well of light sport aircraft. They acknowledge that the industry has done well, has solved some earlier problems with the approval process, and these days that is going along very smoothly. FAA readily admits. Uh, so in addition to the uh, the timeline that it takes and in, in the satisfaction with FAA's comfort zone, let's put it, with the light sport aircraft manufacturing community, is that the safety record has also been good. FAA has constantly said it's acceptable, which is a word they use all the time, and that's fairly high praise for a regulator. So LSA has done well. Now, what we've asked them for are some very specific things, and I'm going to go through these briefly. If you want to read more, I'll give you the website address later where you can read additional detail. But just to hit the high points right here, first of all, a lot of people have asked about weight. Weight will go up, but it's no longer going to be something that FAA says the weight number is, let's say, 3,600 pounds, which is a number that was announced earlier, and that number is completely irrelevant because what they're really doing is something they call the power in Index. Basically, you can think of this as kind of a formula, and that formula involves things like wing loading, horsepower, and the vehicle's airframe weight, and perhaps other factors. This is yet to be decided, as is the whole rule. The point will be, however, that the weight of a light sport aircraft will definitely go up. And in fact, a proof of that is that four seats are also on the docket. So that's that's a lightweight four-seater, basically, but nonetheless, four seats compared to just the two today. So these are just a couple of the high points of what is coming, but there are some specifics as well. Speed may go up, not too much, but it may go up somewhat. And as the weights increase and the speeds increase, we can expect that there will be what FAA calls categories of light sport aircraft and what pilot licensing is required to fly those vehicles still to be determined. So there's a lot we don't know. I'm just telling you the few things that we do know at this time. So let's go to the LAMA specific requests. One of them was we've been fighting this battle for a long time and I'm very, very pleased to tell everyone that gyroplanes, which have been a huge success in Europe and a large success here in the USA, in the US has been held back by them all having to be built as kits. Whereas now, uh, FAA is finally acknowledging that special light sport aircraft, that's fully built light sport aircraft gyroplanes, will be on, it's on the docket. Again, nothing is certain until it's all done and approved and out there as a new regulation, but we believe that they're going to move in this direction. This has been a 15-year battle, and it's really great to be on the edge of winning it. Uh, another thing that's very important is electric propulsion. Lots of people are excited about it. It has been prevented because in the previous rule in two th issued in 2004, an aircraft could not have electric. Now FAA set out to to prevent turbine power, uh, but called reciprocating a requirement. Well, reciprocating means not electric, so electric got knocked out even though FAA did not mean that. That will now be corrected, but not only electric, also hybrid, that is a combination of gasoline and electric, or fuel and electric, uh, will also be part of the program. Other work needs to be done like ASTM, which has an standard already for electric needs to make a new standard for hybrid so lots of people have a lot of work to do not just the FAA another item that was very high on our list was what's called aerial work or what might be called commercial use and that is using a light sport aircraft for something other than 
currently permitted compensated flying, such as flight instruction, rental, and towing. Those are already permitted today. So allowing those to continue and expand is reasonable, we thought, and FAA finally went along with us after we submitted white papers on these subjects to kind of prove the points that we meant about it. And uh, we found FAA very willing to consider these things, and they did. So aerial work or commercial use is is on, on the docket. Again, nothing is certain until it's all done. That does involve another group that has to do with pilot licensing. So there's multiple agencies or groups within the Federal Aviation Agency that uh, have to weigh in on all this. And that's why it's just going to take some time, folks. Okay, and another one that we found uh, that was uh, equally important uh, arose a little later in the process, but we think it's real important, is basically in-flight adjustable propellers. And that we achieved some success with FAA by saying, look, how about you consider the concept of what's called single lever control, or SLC it's sometimes abbreviated. Single lever control is just basically imagine a throttle, you move it all the way forward, that means you're taking off, probably, and, you, and the engine knows uh, what's being asked of it, and instruments know the speed, and other in pieces of information are useful so that a system can just say, oh, you must be taking off, let's go to uh, climb pitch. And once you get up in the air and, and you're at altitude and you pull back on the throttle, the aircraft again is going to go, aha, speed is higher now, power requirements are less, we can now go to cruise pitch. And again, when you pull back further and you're in a landing descent, uh, the airplane will know all these factors and it can adjust. So the pilot gets the benefit of an in-flight adjustable prop but without his workload going up, which is part of what FAA wants to stay with as they contemplate higher weights, things like adjustable pro propeller props, uh, higher speeds, more seats, all these kinds of things. They still want these aircraft to stay safe, simple to fly, and easy for the uh, operator to, to operate. So all of those things are just some of the highlights. You can read more at the website I'll give you in just a second here and find out additional detail. Plus, we will continue to ask FAA for updates until they enter a period called ex parte, which is a Latin term meaning they can't talk about the regulation anymore. At that point, it will be to a far enough point They'll quit discussing it, and after that will come out the notice of proposed rulemaking, which then the public can comment on for a period of time, usually 90, 120 days, something like that. And then FAA has to look at every single one of their comments, make adjustments to the rule as necessary, and then issue a final rule. That can take up to another 16 months. So there you start adding those things together, you begin to see why this thing isn't coming out in 2019 for sure, probably not in 2020, my own best guess is could be 2021, very likely even later than that. The point is, however, some wonderful things are coming. Many people are excited about it. It will bring changes, and changes can always be difficult, but the outlook looks very promising. We're excited to see more of this. We congratulate FAA for listening and considering all these ideas, and we're appreciative of our partner, the U.S. Ultralight Association, along with the Light Aircraft Manufacturers Association, and the support of organizations like EAA and AOPA and GAMMA, the, light, the General Aviation Manufacturers Association, for all moving in the same direction on these goals that are going to make light sport aviation better. So get more information on my website, that's bydanjohnson.com, where you can read all kinds of additional information about this new regulation, plus look at all kinds of cool, affordable light sport aircraft, sport pilot kits, and ultralights. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dan Johnson, reporting here from Oshkosh 2019.